Yeah, all right. Good morning. Good morning. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, can any? Can everyone hear me? Is my mic working okay today? I know sometimes that it goes sideways. So just so want to make sure we got audio and we're ready to rock. <laughs> ready to rock. All right. So today, let's see here. What do we got? Do, 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 do. Okay, <clears throat> so today um, I'm be working on our. Hey, Richard. Uh, I'm going to be working on our well monitor. Um, recall that I don't know if we did this last time or we did the GPS last time. I can't remember because <laughs> you know memory, memory. Um, we were working on a well monitor and and basically we were using a uh, distance a range finder to determine the contents of a well or how much uh, water was in a well. And uh, we built this uh, fun little app using the project lab board. And then we had this um, distance sensor here, right there. And um, then we made a little graph on the project lab board. And depending on how far away, you know, the distance was reading, um, the well, we would show display like the fullness of the well, right? So here it is um, updating depending on, um, you know, how far away the thing was. <clears throat> so I'm going to continue on that path today. Let me pull up a text edit. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 Okay, so today we're going to continue on this. We're gonna expand on this a little bit. I have this, um, I have this, ooh, sorry, it's a uh, puke vision. Um, so I have this, this is my lab. Um, hello, Brian's lab, ooh, lab slash woodshop. Um, I have this rain barrel here. And in this rain barrel is a sonar uh, sensor from Max Botics. And this will read uh, how far the well, how much water is in this uh, rain barrel, right? So this is like a rain capture system. Sorry, my camera work is shoddy. Uh, <laughs> let's put that down before anyone pukes. <clears throat> so today, what we got. So today, uh, I want to do a couple of things. One, I want to add support for this uh, Max Botics uh, sensor. And I want to, and let me pull that up real fast so we have some information about it. Okay, so this is the sensor, this is MB7850XL tank sensor. I'll put that in here in case anyone wants to follow along. And um, you can see it's it's pretty expensive actually. It's uh, 200 bucks plus 75 or whatever for the shielded um, cable attachment. Uh, if you're buying a lot, they're cheaper. But this sensor, <clears throat> I will say this, these Max Botic sensors are very good. Um, they're very responsive. They're very uh, uh, accurate. And um, this particular sensor can talk over serial and I squared C and even I think analog. Um, so it's a, very, it's a very cool sensor and we have a driver for it. So if I go developer, peripheral driver library, Max Botics, we have basically drivers for all of the Max Botics sensors. Um, so here's the here's the API docs for it. So um, yeah, so I want to add support for the Max Botics sensor, and then I want to abstract out um, our two hardware configurations. 
<clears throat> so I want to abstract out our, you know, bench, proto, hardware, and our lab, proto, hardware. And, and, and basically the difference here is that one of these is something I can pack up and put in a box and carry on travel, right? And you just run it to your desk. So, so this plug-in sensor with the distance thing, you know, that's the one that's the lab, uh, the bench prototype. And then the lab prototype is this big uh, rain barrel and then the actual sensor. And typically a lab prototype would be with the actual parts that you're using, um, but would run in a lab. So it wouldn't have to be hardened. It wouldn't have to have, you know, industrial design or whatever. So that's kind of like in the life cycle of um, IoT, you know, you first sort of start out with uh, some sort of bench, bench prototype, so IoT life cycle. So some sort of bench prototype or POC. And, and you'll keep this living throughout um, the life of the product because you'll probably go back to the bench prototype to do to do certain work, um, especially like if you're doing work that doesn't require a lot of the hardware like um, cloud integrations and stuff. And then you might get to a lab prototype and then you go to a field, a field prototype um, in which you have like, um, so this is, so, so a lab prototype, you might start to use the actual hardware, um, a field prototype, you'll introduce, um, your, you know, like industrial design, uh, enclosures, etc. And then you might go to like a production alpha or beta in which, um, <clears throat> you start to put it all together. <clears throat> and basically create like a beta product, right? It may not be small, it may not be optimized, but it's gonna be somewhat close to the actual product. And then finally you launch to production, right? So this is kind of like the five step-ish um, path to production of IoT. And one of the great things, and I'm gonna show you guys this today, one of the great things about our, the architecture of Meadow Foundation and, and sort of the benefit of being able to use full uh, full .NET is that we've done a lot of great abstractions and interfacing and contract work so that you can use one application and then target multiple hardware. Um, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like today. So yeah, so I wanna add support for our Max Botic Sensor. I wanna abstract out our bench prototype and lab hardware and then I want to I want to upgrade our uh, visualization, upgrade our visualization. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, uh, do, do, do. We want to if I go to the Meadow Project Lab repo, and then I go to the samples repo. Jorge has built this really awesome um, battery graph. And I kind of want to use this. I, or I want to use this. I want to um, do a couple of modifications. <clears throat> but I, I want to upgrade our, our noisy, what we have right now, this kind of noisy um, display with all that information from the project lab. And I want to <clears throat> I want to integrate a better graph. <clears throat> and then I want to clean up some of the other... Um, other stuff in there. So upgrade visualization. And finally, I want to clean out the app because there's a lot of stuff in there that's just like the whole kitchen sink of, of the um, of the project lab is in there. So it's doing a lot of stuff and it doesn't need to be. Okay, cool. All right. All right. All right. So first thing that we need to do is I am going to test the max botic botics sensor to make sure that it's working and so to do that i'm gonna go and i'm gonna open up meadow foundation <clears throat> and i may actually i may have to do a bunch of polls um <clears throat> we'll see <laughs> i may to get this building um <clears throat> actually it should work if i go to foundation and i switch to main branch this is the branch that everyone's working on do, do what are my changes here um, bring, let's just do switch branch. <clears throat> okay, we just switched to the main branch. 
reloading the project. And, and I have to do this because uh, there's a lot of work in flight on all of our stuff all the time. So if I'm on develop branch, then I'm going to get um, that kind of work in flight. <clears throat> and I don't know if it's compatible with whatever OS I've got on my, <laughs> my published latest OS and all that. I could probably make it work, but do, do, do. All right. This is way faster on Visual Studio for Windows, but the package restoration in um, Visual Studio for Mac is like serial and it's parallel on Windows. So it takes a little while. Um, so while we're at that, while that's happening, let's actually go to Meta Foundation. So much faster on Windows, yeah. Hey look, package is successfully restored. And we're going to go peripherals and we're going to go find our distance, max botx. And this is great. So I love Meadow Foundation. You know, you can see you can go in here and you can um, get this. You can look at the source for all for all the peripherals. Um, there's samples for everything. All right. So we have the app up here. Um, Cool. We have uh, the serial. Well, I've got this hooked up to serial. Oh, and let me show you. <clears throat> I've got this hooked up. So this is very cool. So uh, back to puke vision here. Um, so there's my sensor, right? And it's got this wire that comes down and then it goes to my desk. And then I've got this Seed Studio screw terminal um, to Grove adapter which is very awesome. And this is a cool thing. Also the wire colors all basically match up. Um, blue and yellow is the only thing that's, you know, that's the signal lines. Um, but uh, yeah, those all match up. And then I just plug it into um, the project lab. So I love the project lab because it really makes prototyping fast. You know, it's just, I love being able, you know, like I, I've never really loved breadboarding. Um, I might, I don't know, I got fat fingers and, and I always have to use like uh, needle nose pliers and stuff to make it happen. And the great thing about this project lab board is I don't have to breadboard, I don't have to solder, I just plug stuff in. Um, so it's very cool. All right, uh, so here's our Max Botex. We're gonna set this as our startup project, which I think it already is. And um, I think there, I think there might be a bug. When I ran this the other day, I, this is fixed, but this read has, um, there's a bug in that. Um, but I think the rest of it works. So Let's build this and deploy it. It's gonna take a little while because uh, first time you deploy an app, it's gotta it's gotta uh, put all the stuff on there. Um, anyway, this driver you can you can up actually um, I'll put this in the so we're using the serial one. You can see it creates a, a serial message port listens to messages and then um, does some parsing. You know, I think it, it's uh, what comes out is like R100 space something. Anyway, it's got this, it basically gives us some information back in a, in a text uh, uh, text file and or a text message and then we parse it out. It's super simple. Um, but all the, a lot of the hard work here is done in the sensor base itself. So we have this um, uh, oh, byte comms sensor base. So it, it basically handles a lot of the internal um, stuff. So actually creating um, your communications ports and stuff. It's all pretty, it's all pretty wrapped up. All right, files being downloaded. And um, let me send, oops. If you guys, if anyone wants to look at this, I'll put a little link. What, you don't like diagnosing failures by checking continuity across component? component? Yeah, exactly, man. That's the other thing about breadboards is that they're so unreliable. You know, you like, you put your stuff in there 
And then you're like, well, everything looks right. Why is this failing? And it turns out like one of the leads is not connecting in the breadboard just right, you know? And like, there's always ground failures and yeah. Anyway, um, that, that's the thing that you don't have to worry about really with um, the Project Lab board. So I really like uh, hacking with the Project Lab boards. You know, I have a little, I have a little container. So this, I travel with this is just a little, um, just a little uh, snapware container, and the Project Lab board fits into this along with the things that I can pl I would plug in and the cables, and that is literally what I travel with these days. No more like tools and breadboards and stuff, and uh, it's it's, I, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. All right, so I just saw initialize. Um, cleared the window, so it should be coming up. Takes a little bit of time for that first run. Do, do, do. Um, do we have everything plugged in? Do, do, do. Looks like I'm not actually getting anything. So let's add some, um, let's add some information here. This should work. Let's do uh, resolver. So let's do uh, logger equals resolver dot log. This is what is that? Logger. Logger. Using my logging. Okay. So initialize. Oh, I know what's happening here. I <clears throat> so we're not we weren't getting any data because it's actually on COM one on um, the project lab board. So if you look at a schematic or the pinout, you'll see that the Grove uh, digital UART uh, stuff is on COM one, which you probably actually can't see, and I can't figure out how to zoom in. Um, let's do this. Uh, there it is. Uh, COM one. So that's going to help. That's going to fix. Also, it's not an HR 10 meter. <clears throat> if you recall, it was an XL. Um, so there we go. Um, do, do, do. And then let's also, let's put a little bit of help here. Um, Logger.info uh, sensor up. Boop, sensor up. And let's deploy this. This is cool. This uh, can this you can use these sensors a couple of different ways. One, you can do one-off reads, and then other the other way is that you can say start updating, and then you can either listen listen to the event, do classic eventing, so distance updated, or you can create an observer. So we have this um, observable uh, pattern, and then you can. You pass in your handler, so this is, you know, and then an optional filter. So like you can filter and you can say, hey, listen, only notify me if the change in distance is more than half a centimeter, which is like so cool. It's such a powerful pattern and it's all baked in and you get it for free by, um, <clears throat> by inheriting from any of the sensor bases. Hey, look at that. Okay, 88 centimeters to the bottom. Let's change it. Where I'm, I'm, I've got the, so I've got it here. I'm, I'm uh, moving it up and down. And you can see, look at how responsive that is. This, honestly, this sensor is incredible. This is really, I mean, like I said, it's expensive, but this Max Botics makes uh, some legit stuff. Okay, so this is working. <clears throat> Looks like it's about 89, 88 centimeters to the bottom of the, barrel so we know what an empty barrel looks like and we know that our sensor is working so that's fantastic and I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this because I'm gonna use that in my own app let's 
close this. Let's go back to our let's go back to our rainwater monitor app. <clears throat> Okay, so um, I've got some stuff to do. So also, oh, um, recall before that we were directly, uh, we had a direct dependency on the project lab um, project, and we don't need that anymore. So I want to remove that. I'm going to make sure this dependency is gone. Um, and we're going to add... Um, we're going to add a project lab new get there we go uh siska from dk uh siska is that denmark <clears throat> i like denmark been to denmark quite a few times uh you said it was expensive but compared to what what is the price yeah so it was 200 bucks um so we go max botics so it's like 200 bucks plus another 75 for the cable um attachment to be built in so that versus this Adafruit VL53, let's see, VL530, time of flight, 15 bucks. So, you know, 15, actually that was, um, we had the one with the Stemma QD. So yeah, still 15 bucks. So 245 versus 15 bucks, but one is ruggedized and fits right into the thing and is super uh, accurate. And the other one is, um, yeah, it's not, it's not great for accuracy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, all right. All right, cool. So we have switched over to the project lab NuGet. So let's make sure that we still build. And uh, want to make sure that it's, uh, yeah, right. Uh, also, welcome to the chat, Siska. Welcome in. Actually, I don't speak Danish. I do speak, well, I sp spoke some Swedish back in the day, but. All right, so that's uh, deploying. Let's do just a quick walk through the app. <clears throat> um, we're gonna do some cleanup too. So we got our Meadow app, we initialize, we, uh, yeah, it did sound Swedish. Yeah, it does sound it's a Swedish. <laughs> Hi, yeah, my name is Brian. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, uh, your head, that Brian. <laughs> I'm from Sweden. <laughs> uh, I actually really love the Swedish language. I love that, like, sing song. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to this. So we instantiate our hardware in here, um, set everything up. Uh, the project lab... NuGet does a lot of the hard work of bringing up the um, bringing up the hardware. In fact, if you look at if we look at where is it uh, bench prototype rainwater monitor hardware, we just inherit from Project Lab, <clears throat> and then that instantiates everything, and then we can just listen. We can just add uh, event handlers, and then um, we've got and then there's a run method, and that's where we start everything up. We say start updating. And then we built this um, storage container, which is a model of a con container. And it's basically kind of a sensor itself. Um, it, it tells us, you know, you basically can get the volume based on uh, the internal distance sensor. Um, <clears throat> just as, a, uh, you know, just kind of refreshing where we're at. And then we have this I rainwater monitor hardware, um, BL five, three UX L whatever distance sensor. So we're going to add that. We're going to add a, um, where's my text edit? Yeah. We're going to add our max botics in here. We're going to make this a generic. It's going to be like an I range finder. All right. <clears throat> Meadow app. Okay, cool. Initializing RGB up, SPI up, I squared C up, MCPs up, speakers up. <laughs> we should make a speaker. We should do make some noise. <laughs> Okay, everything's still working. That's fantastic. 
create or stop that so then we get some more space. All right, let's do a little bit of let's do a little bit of house cleaning while we're here. Um, new folder, let's say controllers, and <clears throat> new folder hardware. And I'm going to move the display controller into controllers, and let's move our hardware into here. All right. So, bench proto rainwater monitor hardware. <laughs> it's a lot. We're also going to do our lab proto. And this, let's see, um, high rainwater monitor hardware. Um, all right, so this is going to be um, high distance, it's high range finder. Range finder. So that should work. I ran, this is I monitor. We just did. Boo, boo, boo. And then let's make a base. Let's make a, a new class. We're going to say um, rain, water. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Water, monitor. Maybe we should call it well, well monitor, water storage monitor, hardware, water storage monitor, water storage monitor, hardware. It's not just storage, right? We might have other stuff. We might have a pump, water monitor, hardware, base, base. All your base that belong to us. And then, um, it's going to inherit from Project lab. Oops, wrong place. Project lab. And it's going to also be I rain water monitor hardware. And I'm going to fix up these namespaces. Probably don't need a base yet, but I'm gonna add it anyway because we we also have this um, I have a a relay here. So like let's say I have a pump hooked up, I might want to put um, that relay in both uh, in the base. Um, all right, so water monitor hardware base, I rain water hardware. Can implement this. So we need to go here. We need a not a distance sensor or not VL5. It's going to be an I range finder. Um, hello, hello, Jim. Um, distance sensor. Let's pull this out, put this in the base. Okay. So far, uh, no, this is a water, um, a, like a rainwater or a well monitoring project. Okay, do, do, do. And now this is gonna be the base, water monitor hardware base. And I'm gonna rename this, it's gonna be bench proto, water, get rid of rain, water monitor hardware. Let's move this to the base too. Oop. Cool. And it's going to be right. Our bench wa bench proto is going to have the VL three, and then our um, oh, I copied and pasted my code, and then I for I copied my code from the Max Botics, and then I forgot to. All right, now we're going to have. I just knew get we need that max botics max botics package meadow peripherals dot sensors is it distance no maybe meadow it's meadow foundation meadow foundation dot peripherals sensors dot mm -mm -mm, meadow foundation dot sensors dot 
instance. Now we're going to say uh, max products. Uh, do, 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 distance sensor equals new max products. And it's going to be uh, resolver. Oops. Resolver. dot device serial port names um, and this is actually a bug that we're working on um, so I f7 feather meadow device um, device equals resolver dot device has I f7 meadow device and then we have to use this in here device dot serial get serial names. Um, actually, it has to be F7, B2. There we go. So this should be fixed in the next release. Um, but you can't get this. Oi, where is this serial? I, F7 feather V2 should have device. Device dot serial. Port names. There we go. Com one. Um, and then the type of sensor is going to be this XL. All right. So that should create our. Would this be for a timer and sensor irrigation um, for Veggie Garden? It could be. Yeah, you could use that. Um, start out with. Um, yeah, I just want to uh, monitor how much water is in the system and then potentially turn on a pump or something. <clears throat> but just knowing how much water is in your well, you know, would is would be good. Okay, um, and let's add some logging information, some console output. Okay, cool. Oh, this is the base. I put it in the wrong spot. Um, we need a um, a new one. We need add. Oh, let's rename this because we simplified water monitor hardware. We're gonna do add a new class lab proto water monitor hardware, and it's gonna look. So lab proto and bench proto are going to look very similar. Oop. All your base. All right. And Let's add this pump relay just for funsies. So we're gonna say relay, relay. We're gonna put this into the base. Ah, let's do that. We'll do that later. I do want to add this relay to the base, but we'll do this. We'll do that later. Um, I like how you chose to team up the F7 and the ESP32. Very good match. Thanks. Uh, it was a lot of work. <laughs> Just ask Mark Stevens. Um, I project lab hardware. I think that's correct. So I rainwater monitor inherits. We're going to inherit from that project lab. It's going to implement that interface. Okay. Where are we at? Water monitor hardware base. Project lab. I rainwater monitor. Um, ah, we already have that exposed in the project lab. So that's great. Less code. I like less code. Um, these, so this all looks pretty good bench prototype. Oh, this is where we need to put, um, uh oh, where did my, this is the lab one. So that's the thing that goes in our bench prototype. So our bench prototype has that and then our lab prototype should have the other one, the max botics. Here we go. 
Great. So clean up device. All right, so now, and then, so let's go to here, bench prototypes. So this is gonna be in a new, um, oh, we renamed it, bench proto water monitor hardware. And this is also storage container hardware. Let's do a couple of things. I want to make this, so this is should now be I rainwater uh, monitor hardware. And this is not rain, this is just gonna be I, mo I water anyway, right? I water monitor hardware, I water monitor hardware. Cool. And then what is this storage container? All right, so we got to change our storage container and this would take the I water monitor hardware. We get a using hardware, boop, boop, boop. I water monitor, I'm surprised it didn't uh, rename that. Oh, cause it didn't have the right uh, thing. Okay, um, distance sensor, this should be, it's gonna be distance updated, oops. Distance updated. All right, everything should still be working. Let's build. Build. Built. It's built. Cool. Oh. Rained real hard here last night and um, up in uh, Washington, just north of here, it snowed real hard. How do you measure the volume or levels in the cistern well? So we have um, range finders. So there's a couple of them on our lab, on our lab bench prototype. We have this one right here. It's just this time of flight sensor, um, and it uh, you know sends out a little IR pulse and then measures the time to uh, come back. And then for our lab prototype, we have this. Here's my giant rain barrel. And then I've got this Max Botox, um sonar here. So that's, um, that's how we measure. All right, all right, all right. Okay, everything's coming up. Buttons, distance sensor. Cool. Now it's running in a moment. Okay. If I put my thing over the distance sensor, still working. Cool. Everything's, so that's great. So everything's still working now that we did that big refactor. So now I want to instantiate um, instead of this, instead of the pro bench prototype, I want to switch to the lab prototype, which then uses this other distance sensor, right? The max botics. If you know the dimensions of the cistern, you can do a calculation. That's right. So in our storage container, we have a storage container config. We've got two, um, we've got the bench container, which is just made up. And then we've got a 55 gallon dr a drum. And then we do we calculate the volume per centimeter um, and we're, or we have the volume per centimeter and then we basically, uh, we can, the storage container will tell us how much volume, um, it, or how much, uh, yeah, how much it has in the, where is the capacity, empty height. Um, I thought, oh yeah, in the storage container itself, when we get uh, the fill amount, it basically calculates the volume based on the distance. I have a friend who was working on a SCADA field hardware software app that reported volume levels for a water disposal. Ah, that's cool. Yeah, so we've wrapped that all up in a thing. Um, so it makes it super easy. Okay, back to the app. So instead of a bench water 
prototype. Now I want to do um, hardware equals new lab prototype. Okay. So let's see. Now that we're doing that, um, so this is really cool. And again, because we're using all contracts, we're using interfaces for this, because we're using this iRange finder um, and the storage container just takes, uh, you know, the hardware and then does, you know, listens to the distance. Everything should work still, but we're now running with this other sensor. We're running with the Maxbotics sensor. All right, so it's deployed, it looks like. We'll get rid of this noise here in the next release. This was for debugging because the Visual Studio team broke us on debugging again recently. <laughs> so we had a bunch of debug, debugging debug code, um, but this is quiet anyway. Are you going to have a Practical test it with a five, 10 gallon bucket filling and draining, have a spigot, et cetera. As a matter of fact, um, I don't know, let's see if my camera will reach. Um, well, let's see. All right, so let's, we're running this. We're now running it on the um, 55 gallon container. Um, the storage containers rep is saying 0% because I'm using the wrong, I'm using the other um, storage container, but we'll fix that in a sec. The, um, it looks like, um, fill height minus two, if I take this off and move it. Um, yeah, okay, so fill height 43. I'm actually picking up the, the uh, thing and, and moving it around. Okay, so that's working, so that's awesome. Um, so we'll get the storage container updated in a sec. Uh, all right, so Jim, you had a question about the, uh, about if I'm gonna get a bucket and stuff. So there actually is my bucket. Um, and then there's a pump over here, hooked up to the bottom of the rain barrel. I'm sorry, it's blurry. I don't know what's going on with my camera. Come on camera, you can do it, whatever. Uh, so yeah, so, and then there's also a water, there's a couple of water sensors here. Flows, there's a, an old school water meter. Uh, and then there's a, a flow sensor. So. That's kind of next on the list. One thing at a time though. <clears throat> All right. So got two things that I need to do. Uh, one, I want to not have this kind of kajanky stuff here. I don't, I want to, there's a better way to do this. And then two, I need to fix our storage container. So let's add a new class. Let's do an enumer enumeration. And we'll say hardware config types. And I'm going to do a lab uh, bench proto, bench proto, lab proto. And eventually they'll be like, you know, field proto. Where would you deploy the installation? Mostly practical for rural. Well, it just depends. I mean, I have uh, some of these up. Like, this is how I feed my or water my chickens. Um, but if you had like a just a well, um, it would be the same thing. Okay, bench proto, lab proto, and meadow app. So in here, we're gonna say, I wanna just set, I wanna basically set uh, in one spot what our hardware is. So I'm gonna say, um, hardware config types, um, I wanna say hardware, current hardware config and then whatever we want, right? Lab proto, bench prototype. And then in here, we're gonna say switch, switch if I can, oh, switch on. Um, current hardware config, sweet default, and that's gonna fall through to hard, Case hardware config types. We're gonna default to the bench. 
And in that case, we're gonna say hardware equals this and case hardware config types dot lab. Do you have an automation for feeding your chickens? Not yet, but that is a good idea. <laughs> I just have a, I just have a feeder and I just fill it up once a week or whatever. Hardware equals new lab prototype. Okay, so now break. Based on whatever we set up here um, is what gets instantiated. And then for our storage container, um, so we're gonna do the same thing. So switch um, hardware, what was it called? I already forgot, current, current hardware config. How come I didn't get that nice autocomplete like I did last time? Switch, switch, huh. Oh, well. case, bench proto, break, case, lab proto, break. And in this case, we're going to Storage container is going to be a bench container. Um, actually, we'll do this. We'll say um, known storage container, or uh, we'll do what is that? What, what's that? Storage container config. Storage container config. Container config. We'll say do are they free range? Do they lay in eggs? They are uh, free range. Um, and I have nine of them, so uh, they like quite a few eggs. I, I drink a lot of eggnog, <laughs> eat a lot of eggs. Container config equals known storage container configs. In this case, it's gonna be the bench container. And in the lab, it's gonna be um, container config equals known storage container lab. Um, uh, standard 55 gallon drop, right? That's what we're gonna use on the lab. So we'll get rid of that. Um, cool, so that should do it. So we're cruising along here. Um, add support for the max robotics sensor, done. Abstract out our bench prototype and lab prototype hardware. Um, so we've just done that. Um, oh, it looks like I gotta reset and try this again. It, uh, let's reset our device. Sometimes it just gets in a bad state. Oops. Boo -boo -boo. There we go. Okay, so we've abstracted out our bench prototype and lab prototype hardware. We're doing the final testing there. Upgrade visualization and then clean out the app. We've been doing kind of the, a bit of the clean out as we go. Uh oh, what's going on here? Let's stop this. Stop this nonsense. Let's uh, restart Visual Studio. Rainwater monitor. Look at all the new stuff I need to download at some point. Is the project solar battery operated backup? Um, not right now, it's just running in my lab. <laughs> but eventually, yeah, um, I think I'll do this, uh, um, you know, we'll run on a battery of some sort. All right. 
<clears throat> How's everyone doing? Is there going to be a guy to write up for it? Um, that's a good question. Uh, that's a question for Jorge. <laughs> I have definitely today. Oh, that's by the way. Um, I've also got to open source this thing. So I've got to add, I want to add the sample, add the app to the project meadow project lab samples repo. So right now it's just sitting in my projects folder. Um, so we, I need to make this public. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, um, I think Jorge could probably will can and probably will write uh, a guide on Hackster. So we have a ton of Hackster, um, a ton of uh, projects up on Hackster. And so this could definitely be um, another one. All right, everything display controller up. Hibernating and watching, learning software, hardware, coding streams. That's cool. We're in a deep freeze. Minus 17 Canadian. Wow. Minus 27 Canadian with wind chill. That's too cold. It's too damn cold. Temp is too damn cold. All right. Uh, this looks like it's crashing. I don't know why. Why is it crashing? So we bring up the... After it brings up the... After the display controller comes up, let's just run it one more. Stack trace, oh, that's the thing. I think this, I think we're crashing this real nice, real good. Let's figure out why it's crashing. I've got, I've, I've clearly got a bug, um, probably an NRE, an old reference exception someplace. Let's uh, figure out where and why. Jim, where are you at that you're, uh, what's YYC, YYC? Where are you at that it's minus uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, airport code, gotcha. Canadian A, oh, Canadian A. I <laughs> learned my Canadian airports, that's right. <laughs> Especially if I'm gonna live there. I work on my work on my Canadian accent, a boat in a boat at the airport. The Great White North. All right. Take off, hey, <laughs> you hoser. <laughs> Same place, display controller up. So it is crashing someplace in the display controller. I wonder why. It's probably one of these, probably having a divide by zero. Um, are you gonna give any more talks presentation virtual or otherwise? I think there's, I think we might have a talk scheduled soon. Um, I think what's happening, this is my guess, is that I haven't set um, in my storage container, um, I'm not doing very, a lot of uh, checking on the volume and stuff, but let's um, let's figure out. All right, so display controller is up. That's in here, someplace. Um, display control. Where's my graphics display? Display controller. Display. controller up okay so it gets here and then do 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 all this was working before storage container let's let's do a thing here let's do a logger or log dot uh, 
Instantiating storage container. <laughs> Versus weights now the Canadians are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I haven't done in a while? Sean Connery. <laughs> Maybe we should go back to the Sean, Sean Connery action. I also had some um, German friends, the Germans from Slack, Slack, the Stanford Linear Accelerator. <clears throat> they were visiting this last weekend, so I was working on my German, the German accent. <laughs> Equal opportunity uh, purveyor of bad ac accents. All right, let's... Uh, Let's figure out where this thing's crashing. <laughs> yeah, let's figure out where the crash is. Das is not good. Hey, yo, where is it the crashing? Why is it the blowing up? Still crashing, so it doesn't even make it to this con storage container. So I like I I think something's happening in display controller. Let's figure out where that's at. All right, uh, so it gets to here. So we know that that happens. Um, display controller comes up, and then motion sensor, all these things. Um, <clears throat> Somewhere between there and there. <clears throat> Let's see if it's something happens in here. Logger info. Um, we're gonna say display controller update. Hmm. I don't really know how to delete that uh, spam. <laughs> Auto mod. New gets allow. Latest code in Meadow Foundation are the new gets. Good question. Um, I'm using the new gets. The new Jays. Sean Connery, The Hunt for Red October is a classic. Yeah, right? And he's in a Scottish accent as a Russian the whole time. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> the console logging is debugging. That's right. We actually can debug, but I'm on an old build of the, um, of the extension because I'm on Apple Silicon Mac and it takes a while. If I hit make a, if I make a breakpoint, it will hit it, but it takes a long time. Um, okay. Display controller update. Let's figure out where this is happening. I think it's happening in this display controller. Need to add a bunch of, a uh, bunch more logging, but let's start with this. Chat is considered form of rubber duck debugging. Time to reboot the Visual Studio. No. I'm not.
So this is really interesting because what we changed was this, and that's when it started crashing. But we don't even get to this instantiating storage container anymore. I still think it's in this display controller, though. I still think I'm doing some divide by zero math. Oh, got to instantiating storage container. All right, so maybe we are crashing in instantiating storage container. So let's go to here. Um, container. Wait. We never, do we ever instantiate it? Container config. We actually, oh my gosh, we literally don't even instantiate it. Okay, so we needed to do, boy, this is, we're basically calling. We're getting in our NRE because I forgot to do um, storage container equals new storage container and then container config. That was dumb. That was dumb, yeah. That was a dumb, yeah. And then he needs a try catch. I, I need to try catch everywhere. Uh, hardware. Right, storage container, hardware, container info, storage container config, why is it not like that? Use of unassigned, oh yeah, cause let's do um, default, there we go. All right. Should be much better now. And I really do need to try catch around this. Making good progress. Um, yeah, make real good progress. I love how easy it is to, I know this, it sounds like a, a corporate shell or something for my own company, but I guess I am, but, um, I really do love how easy it is to develop hardware with Meadow. I mean, there's just, the APIs are so beautiful and, um, Having full.net running on a microcontroller just makes me feel good. I mean, we got some like issues here and there. Like we should have really gotten an NRE and I'm not sure why that didn't happen, um, but still. Okay, still crashing here, but Vi. So let's go and let's put some instrumentation here. Do logger info uh, storage container. Container up. Thanks, Jim. Do do do. All right. So let's see.
Jorge, thanks for uh, putting the hammer down on the spam. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Jorge's getting power drunk. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> Okay, instantiating storage container, and then, and then it, I wonder if we're even getting into here, known, um, let's put one more here, not to instantiate. Say setting storage container info. Big. This is a strange crash. Distance sensor. Is the distance sensor up by then? It should be. Adrian, is it still uh, snowing at your house? All right, setting storage container config, and it never seems to get to here. So why? Standard 50 container. This is weird. Let's do default case logger info. Um, stream died? Oh no. I'm still here. Is that, is it, did it go down for anyone else? Oh, okay, great. <clears throat> Your setting setting bench parallel. Um, do we we are setting that up here, right? Current can hardware config. Go through that. Let's do try exception E.
I'm gonna do a try catch in here. Oops. Setting lab proto. Let's do some, I really do think it's in the display controller. We'll get to that. Let's also, let's go back to the bench and see if that works. Just for giggles and poos. Cancel. All right, so display controller. We're going to do ah, let's wrap this whole thing. Try catch exception. Could be an event firing the handler tearing. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what's happening. I think it's, it's crashing in the background. Look at that. So the bench one works. Do, do, do. Okay. So when we create a storage container um, with the lab prototype, that's when things go sideways. Let's switch back over to the bench prototype and see if that, uh, I'm sorry, the lab prototype. And um, let's see now if it's in this display controller. I wonder if we're not, if I forgot to instantiate something correctly. Hardware. Display controller, date, draw.
Hmm. Same crash, same spot. Hmm. Storage container. And we don't ever get into here. This is really strange. I wonder if I have a, I wonder if I have a, uh, um, Stack overflow. I bet I do. Let's go to let's go to known storage container configs. Oh my gosh, I totally do. Oh no, <laughs> so dumb, so dumb. Oh, so dumb. Okay, folks, uh, I'm gonna use the restroom. While I'm using the restroom, uh, why don't we play a little game called Look at my code and tell me why I'm getting a stack overflow. I know what it is. Okay, so who figured it out? <laughs> Adrian did. Ah, this is uh, this is a recursive. Uh, well, it's just a loop. It's just a. It's going to cause a stack overflow because instead of returning the lowercase standard fifty five, I'm returning the the thing which would call itself. Um, let's make sure. Yep, those both. So that was my error. That's what was causing a stack overflow and. Um, Stack Overflows in .NET, actually one of the places where .NET this does not, actually it doesn't not, it doesn't matter if it's .NET, it's anywhere, Stack Overflow kind of tears down everything. All right, now that we're hopefully beyond that. Slay. <laughs> uh, All right, should be back in the game. Back in the game, what's up? <laughs> that was a wasted 20 minutes, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's programming, right? <laughs> Oh, as a, you know, 11 folks, so it's 11 times 20. So it's a wasted 200 minutes, 200, 210, 210 minutes or whatever, <laughs> 211 minutes. Uh, Hey, look at that. All right. All right. Now it's working. Do, do, do. Okay. And let's uh, move our thing. There we go. Full, very full, less full. I'm moving the, um, wait, sorry. I'm getting... Moving the uh, sensor up and down. You can see it's uh, doing appropriate things. 
Cool. All right. Let's uh, uh let's move on. <laughs> All right. All right. Also, there's a lot of noise here. Um, do do do. So I want to I want to clean up some of this stuff. Like I don't really care about a lot of it. Um, so let's go into. So we're at least up and running. Upgrade to visualization. Clean out the app. So I want to go into display controller. And I really don't care about the this display controller is kind of a catch all for stuff. I don't care about the button states. I don't care about the angular velocity of the gyroscope. I really don't care about the light conditions. Temperature's fun. Um, also, I wanna rename this graphics to canvas because we're drawing on a canvas, so it makes it a little clearer for me. Um, let's get rid of this light conditions, accelerometer stuff, uh, blum, blum, blum. All right. <clears throat> We are already going to be a lot cleaner. Remove and sort. I'm not sure. Empty height. We saw this before. It was actually seemed like about 88, um, but I think anything over 85 is going to be empty. So. Let's go to storage container and uh, let's see if volume in liters minus the top times the number of liters is less than zero. Um, volume in liters is zero. I think there's also another one, which is if um, if um, oh yeah, so we actually, okay. If it's less than zero, then we cap it at zero. So one other thing that I wanted to do, um, volume, uh, distance on top um, is less than zero. This is because, um, this is because the VL53LOX um, returns negative. Um, if it's too far, too far. And I also want to do just a quick, I think, well, we'll get to that. There's another thing that I want to do there. Um, okay, Meadow app, let's go back over this. We're going to get rid of this. We're not going to listen to that. Um, um, we don't care about the BH1750. Okay, and we're not gonna update it. Oops. Wait, come on, my mouse button is dying. I actually had to order a new mouse. <laughs> don't care about those. And All right, so cleaning stuff up already. We're not, when these buttons get pressed, we're not gonna do anything about it. Okay, already a lot cleaner. Um, let's just make sure this still works. <laughs> make sure I didn't do something stupid again. Get a stack overflow. Stack overflow.
And let's go find the code for his. Um, uh, damn it. I just lost my dash for my chat dash dashboard Twitch. I accidentally um, about I accidentally closed it. All right, let's go find Jorge's uh, sample in the, this one. Source, oh wait, we can just jump right to it from here. Source code, moisture meter, controller, display controller. So this is the, looks like that's the graph drawing stuff. Is this still working? It's all still working, great. Um, it's a lot of noise in here. Display controller update. We got a lot of logs now. Storage container, fill height. Um, fill height minus two. I think when we did fill height, if it's minus, we need to just say zero. Um, all right, let's go to our display controller and let's move some things around. I wanna do, so he's got, some this is pretty cool um it's got a big fat number for the percentage of fill and then that thing on the left um so i think what he does 12 by 20 font and then probably yeah scale factor two so I want to do something where I want to have a big, uh, I want to have a big temperature on the left. And then I want to have this, the container stuff drawing on the right. So we're going to split some stuff out a little bit. <clears throat> so we're going to say protected void draw um, temp. And we're going to do canvas. And I think I want to save the current. It looks like we are. So we've got this atmospheric conditions. So when it gets, when that gets called, we call update. So we don't actually need, and also canvas is a class level variable. So we can get rid of that as well. So we'll just do draw temp. And we'll say, um, go back to his code. We're going to do this draw text of that but we want to set our font to 12 by 20 so we get those nice degree symbols evidently um we could probably do it in here we don't need to do it here but um set it once and then just use that so we're going to do it at two x y two and then we're going to do um let's see draw um, draw temp Canadian first. So we're going to say, is this going to be atmospheric conditions, temperature, wait, atmospheric contention dot, oh, dot, dot temperature. Where's the dot? Dot Canadian um, degree C horizontal alignment is going to be left. It's cool. They uh, Adrian added this alignments uh, horizontal and vertical alignment on text drawing recently. It's pretty cool. This is going to be canvas draw text Canadian, and then let's draw draw temp. Um, Team America agrees. And this is going to be, so that it's 12 by 20. So 20 font at 2x, so 40. So we need 42. This is going to be dot Fahrenheit. And we want to just do 
and zero. I don't want any decimals. Uh, whole number is fine. Um, so that's the temperature. We're gonna get that, and then we're gonna get so pressure and humidity. We're just gonna do that for now. Um, if atmospheric conditions is conditions, I think we should probably still do a check, right? Atmospheric conditions. This becomes conditions. And we're going to say water monitor. Hello, well, <laughs> well monitor. Hello, well monitor. Actually, we don't want anything there. And um, what's the, what are we going to do for color on these? Let's do uh, color is in here someplace, right? Horizontal color is second, second thing, second. So uh, color is going to be wilderness labs colors dot. Let's do azure blue. Boop. Okay, so we should be drawing temp on the left, and we're getting rid of this te temperature, pressure, humidity, the whole thing. And we need to call this, we need to say, draw temp. Um, all right. And drum roll. <laughs> It'd be a long drum roll. As this thing boots up. All right, booting up, instantiating all the hardware, coming online. Hey, all right. Aw, uh, look at that. That's cool. 77 degrees in here. Doesn't feel like 77. It's probably 77 right there because I got a heater under my desk keeping my toes warm because it's cold AF here. Okay, great. Now let's get the bar graph in um, and we're gonna make this Jorge's bar graph, which is much better than mine. Um, boop, 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 draw bar graph. And uh, one thing, <laughs> his bar graph is much better, but one thing is that there's absolutely no uh, documentation here. <laughs> so I have absolutely no idea what's happening. Uh, all right, I actually looked at this before. So I, I know that this is draw the background uh, of the graph. <laughs> um, and um, so this is uh, to set the color. So it looks like, okay, um, percentage is percentage of fill. So that's gonna be fill percentage, right? Um, fill percent. And I think we need to, I don't know if we need to divide by 100 or I don't know, we're gonna find out. Um, fill percent. Do, do. And I think we still need to do this. 
Oops. So let's get all my stuff here. So what is this color? What what happened? Wasn't there a time in which Visual Studio would give you a little? Oh no, it's Slack. You paste that into Slack, it'll give you a nice little uh, uh, swatch. Note to Visual Studio. Okay, um, canvas in X Y height width fill percent. Um, so we're gonna do X Y here. Um, Height width. We don't need this. We determined. Um, and we should be able to get the fill percent because we're saving it, right? When we save this, container fill percentage gets put in there. I wonder if we should um, just pass the whole thing. Who won the Wilderness Stack Overflow comfort con uh, contest? Adrian spotted it, actually. Adrian spotted it. So he's got that Canadian eye for Stack Overflow, I guess. Um, okay, let's go back to this graph. Um, so draw a rectangle uh, with height. So we're going to make this x, y. Um, and then this is the height and the width. So 100 and... 218. I want to actually make this the whole right side of the thing. So when we draw the bar graph, that's the X, the Y, we're going to start it at two down and we're going to do the same width and height, 100 by 218. So we'll do 100 and actually, did I, I think that's width, height, height, width, height, 75 and 40. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we got with height. I should reverse these height because everything else is with height. Oop. With height, and we're gonna do 100 to 18, 100 to 18 to start. So with height. Secure web sockets for your apps. I think so. I think you can do uh, secure. Yeah, in fact, yes, yes, you can do. You can do secure web sockets. In fact, SSL is all built on that. Okay. Um, if fill percent is 100, then percentage graph. I think this is the number of bars that draw. Otherwise, fill percent divided by. Um, so calculate. Wait, percentage graph. No, so so, so what are we doing, uh, Jorge? Um, basically, only if it's a hundred, make it nine. Otherwise, because we do zero through percentage. Ah, because it's zero through nine. Got it. So, um, index is zero. So we go to nine, and I. Okay. I wonder if we can just do the whole thing minus one, right? Wouldn't it just be fill percent 10 divided by 10 minus one? Oh no, because we always show one at the bottom, maybe. Um, not sure. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna set um so for int, so each one of those bars, we're going to draw the bar, draw a bar, draw. Bar. So um, let's see. Draw, draw a bar for every ten percent of fill, and set the color. Set the color, color, color based on fill percent. All right. So far, so good. Um, a bunch of a bunch of hard coded math in here again. Uh, draw rectangle X. Um, so the bar is going to be at the X, I think. Um, and the Y looks like 222 minus the height of the bar uh, times 
Watch bar plus. <laughs> okay. Uh, and this is going to be the width, I'm pretty sure. And then this is uh, height. Oh, no, X. Yeah, X, Y, width, height. So this is the bar height. So we're going to calculate the bar height, which is going to be probably the height of the thing minus uh, or divided by by 10. Uh, did Figma do an output on this or something? Is that what you said you blame Figma on this? All right, so we're gonna do um, bar height, bar height equals uh, height divided by 10. And I think we have to double, um, we have to like float, float, and then in, right? Not sure if we have to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Float, float, and then the whole thing becomes an integer in the end. Int. Actually, we want to do math dot round um, this whole thing, and it's going to round. Uh, do 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 to midpoint rounding. That's fine. Um, did we get that wrong? Midpoint rounding away from zero. Ah, that's not dumb. I want the what's the what's the normal rounding? Uh, I don't even think it matters. We want to round to zero digits. Okay, and that returns a double, so then we got to int it. <laughs> I think I hope I did that right. We're gonna do some console output here for sure. Faux shizzle. Okay. First of all, what is our percentage, our fill percent? Um, logger.info uh, fill percent is okay. Fill percent is going to be fill percent. Do n two because it may be in. I may have to multiply this by a hundred. We're gonna we'll find out. Okay, bar height. Bar height. Let's. What's our bar height? Logger info. Bar height. All right, and we're gonna figure this stuff out in a moment. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. Uh, we'll make this a parameterized configurable graph <laughs> yet. <laughs> we'll beat it into shape just yet. Or A says he hard coded the coordinates from Figma. <clears throat> okay, fill percent zero. Point zero zero. So let's move this thing and see if we can get it up. Ooh, 98%. Look at that. Whoa, cool. We got a bar graph. Uh, it doesn't have the spaces in between. So I need to do some work there. Um, also, the bar height is 22. We need to fix that. But this is pretty cool. Look at how responsive it is, too. Do, do, 
Let me move my hand. Choo, 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 choo. I got the sensor here. So here we do starting at full and then we're using water and it's going down and down to we got we have a bug here actually we've got some wrong uh math happening it shouldn't be empty until it gets way down there but one thing at a time or at least we got a graph that looks reasonably reasonable okay <clears throat> so what is our height of this thing we're saying drop our graph to 18 so the height should be so that's right so while the height should be oops 21.8 right so it's rounding up to 22 so that's that's correct um it's a 240 pixel display so we do have some space at the bottom um and I want to move it over a bit. So we got 20 pixels on the right that we're not using. Let's go to 138, which give it two pixels on the right. And let's do 200, 220. Um, okay, so that's correct. Now what's this? So this is the... Looks like this is the total height of the graph plus. So we want the bar, I think we want the bar height to be minus one because we want space in between. <clears throat> so per Jorge's uh, design here, he's got one, uh, one pixel space in between. So now we're gonna do, so draw a rectangle X and then Y it's going to be, I think, the height of the graph minus the bar height times i plus 12. Because we had a space in there, bar height plus bar space. So let's do int space, bar space, bar spacing equals one. We'll do minus bar spacing. And I think this is um, bar height times I. I think it's bar height plus bar spacing, right? Times I, and then we can get rid of, I think, this 12, I hope. <laughs> spacing let's see if that works okay so while that's deploying what else do i want to do let's get rid of this um this is the background color anyway um fill percent n2 so that's actually looking good for every 10 percent of fill um, get rid of this bar height, clear that out. Okay, so four, and we're gonna draw a bar for every 10% of fill. Oh, so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna calculate drawing bits. <clears throat> okay, let's see what happens when we tell this thing it's full. Hey, look at that. Um, got one, some error when it's 98% full, I think it should show the top blue bar and it's not. So how do we do that? How do we make this top blue bar? Um, 
put this on the desk. This wants to fall over. All right, I'm gonna have to clamp it. Let me go grab a clamp. Oh, actually, I'll just do this. I'm gonna do this sideways. No, that's not working. Okay, how many bars is it? Let's figure out how many bars it's, it's, uh, yeah, 20 pixels. We, uh, 21, right? Cause we did, we, I updated it to 220 height. Um, and then we put a space in between. Uh, so, um, let's figure out how many, why isn't it doing a full, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it's drawing 10. So it's drawing the correct amount of bars. So it is drawing 10 bars. And each one of those is 21 high plus one would be plus well the sp spacing would be 22 and there's 10 so that's 220 so it should be drawing the whole thing as high as it should so it should be working correctly according to my rough calculations um so we drawing it a height of 220 each bar is 21 plus one space so 22 it's drawing 10 so that should be two that should be 220 high so why is the background it's got to be something here bar height plus bar spacing so let's calculate calculate um let's break this out um calculate the bar y which is this which is the height of and let's just walk through it height of the so uh so far bar y it's the height of the graph minus the bar height plus bar spacing right which would give us the total amount of uh bar room so that should give us 22 and then times i so if i is zero what would that so that would put it at zero so that's the so it'd be the height of the thing so is it drawing one off the did i count this wrong two five six seven eight nine ten So let's say that the height is two. So let's say two. So two twenty, right? Minus uh, twenty two times i. Um, so like if i if i equals zero, then So if I equals zero, then we would be bar y equals two twenty, right? And if so we draw the, the bottom minus twenty. So it's 240 pixels tall. So that would draw at the right spot. And if if i equals let's say 9, right? So the other end of the spectrum, then bar y would be 22 
times nine. Uh, no, if I, all right, that's, that's a problem, isn't it? Right? Cause it'd be nine bars. It would be I plus one in that case. So maybe I screwed up this. That's why he did plus 12. I plus 12. That's the, that was, I don't know what the 12 is actually. Okay, let's go back to this. So if nine, if I equals nine, then uh, that's 198. <clears throat> let's, sorry, let's, let's, I lost my train of thought. Okay, 22 times nine, 198 um, minus, so then it would be two. So that would be the appropriate, it would be two down because it would start at the very top. So all the math looks right, right? Let's do, let's, let's log this out, logger info bar, um, so it's going to be bar I is going to be Y of bar I, uh, Y equals bar Y. And let's put this in bar Y. Okay. All right. X, Y with height Okay. <clears throat> this looks right. Top one is at 220. Oh, but now it's working, except it's upside down. <laughs> I don't know what I did. How did I make it upside down? Okay, well we're getting uh, we're getting closer. At least the graph is um, drying correctly in terms of its x y, um, but it is upside down. <laughs> okay, nine twenty two. All right, so bar y. Um, as we go, I think maybe I should get rid of height because no height of the bar bar height bar spacing bar y. Um, so let's think about this. So bar nine, wait, why is it backwards? For I, oh, oh, he's going backwards here. Oh, that's why. So he's drawing it backwards. I did the math for forwards. So so I think I can just do plus plus and then it should work. Or would it? Because it wouldn't really matter which way it we iterated through the thing, would it? Because it starts at, oh, damn it. 
I gotta stop this. This is while this is less than or equal to um, number of bars, which is gonna be 10, I think. Wow. Right? <laughs> now it's way screwed up. Damn it. Uh, bar nine, bar 10. All right. For I to percentage graph, while well, I is less than or equal to 10. So from I to 10, switch I, that sets the color. Bar Y, what have I, what have I done wrong, wrong here? Why did it? What have I, what have I done? What have I done? So, uh, oh, okay. So zero, so it was correct actually because the zero bar should be the one at the very bottom. Well, I is less than percentage graph. What is percentage graph? Let's, let's log that. Logger info. Zero to for I oh we start at percentage graph, that's why. And we want to start from the bottom. Why is it I'm so confused at this at the logic here? I want to basically write a I want to draw a bar for every percent that is in uh, that we have of stuff. So if we have nine, if we have six bars, then we draw six bars and we draw from the bottom. Uh, all right. So if it's zero to six, oh, I know why. This is all backwards. For I is zero, I is less than percent graph. There we go. So from zero to six bars, draw a bar. Um, yeah, draw it in paint. <laughs> this, this, should, this should work better. So while that's actually updating, I'm gonna use the restroom.
hard to follow what is going on in your head. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is hard for me to follow what's going on in my head. All right, sweet. We are working. Um, we're drawing correctly. I think the, the problem that we're at is the colors are wrong now because I went from zero up to the number of bars to, to draw and um, Jorge went backwards. So let me fix that. Um, let's see if I paste this in here, will it give me a color? Okay, so that's the blue. So blue is bar nine. That's, that should still be right, right? <laughs> if I may have just made a damn mess of this. All right, let's walk through this. So. Uh, the graph, the fill percent was uh, nine. So it should, should do 10 bars. And bar zero is Y of 220. So that's actually, that's correct, right? Bar zero is Y of 220 because it's because it's top left uh, coordinate system in here. Um, so bar zero is 220, bar one is 198, um, is nine 90% filled, nine is 100% filled. So bar zero is 220. So it looks like when I capture, when I do this, this is where my error is. So it's the height. So the first one, so bar zero, oh yeah. So this is actually what's coming out. So I need to reverse this so bar height bar spacing so the first one should be if bar zero it's in the first bar then the bar height bar spacing so 22 times i is zero so height minus that's why so i should do height you know 220 minus wait that's correct Bar zero, if we're starting from the bottom, that's 220 down, and it should be not blue, it should be uh, FF, whatever this is, this orange. So that's red. So why does it do, why does it do red at the top? So zero and one bars should be red. This is weird because if I look at this, bar zero is at 220, bar one is at 198, right? That's correct because if we look at our display, 220 is going to be right there. The next one's going to be 198. Why is it drawing the colors backwards? Oh my gosh, this is why. I, I'm, I'm reversing it again because I forgot to delete that. <laughs> Gosh, oi! <laughs> How much time do we spend on programming like stupid mistakes like that? Too much time is the answer. Too much time. Okay, this should work. <laughs> I, I, have, I feel good about this one. <sighs> And I want to get rid of this water X percent. Um, we don't need that. Boop. We got rid of all this. Boop. Draw temp, draw bar graph. A lot cleaner already. We run. I think we are running. Nope, not running yet. <clears throat> okay. There we go. There we go. That looks a lot better. If we raise it up, 
goes down, goes down. Sweet. Get it closer. It's going up. Okay. Although we're back to drawing nine instead of ten. I don't know what that's about. Okay. Draw zero to twenty all the way to twenty two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So this, the whole thing now needs to be minus the bar height. Um, height minus, uh, yeah, make it a gradient color. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, could, <laughs> I probably could. I'd probably like lock the hue spectrum um, and do some, that'd probably be the easiest way to do that, but I don't think I have that in me today. <laughs> anyway, we need to offset by the last bar. So that's the issue now is that the, we're drawing at 220, but that's the height of the bar. So the whole thing, um, height minus bar height plus bar spacing. So the whole thing uh, minus bar height. I'm sure that this can be simplified, but I, I, I don't think I have it in me to simplify it anymore. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll revisit this or someone else can revisit this. Anyway, I think that's going to fix our, our, our bar, um, stuff. Um, so cause it's deploying upgrade visualization. All right. Do we get to check this off? That is the question. Okay, woo, all right. Right now, the situation is that the bar graph is fixed. It's working correctly. <laughs> so, we get to check it off. Check off that, great. Um, let's go back to this, it's, it's real chatty because we're logging everything. Need to do that anymore. Okay, great. So, and the app is, can you get a closer screen capture of your IoT screen? Maybe. Let me push it in. How's that? How's that? Okay, and we did a bunch of cleanup already, so I'm gonna um, check that off, which is good. And um, there's one, so there's uh, one other, there's a bug um, in that when I lift up the thing, the sensor right now, um, it's showing, uh, that as empty when it's only halfway up. Um, so I've got a wrong calculation in the distance to volume conversion. Um, but I think I might fix that another day. So what I want to do now is I want to add this to our, um, let's add this to our thing. Um, I want to add it to the project lab samples. 
So that was, that's the next thing. So I need to do, let's see, project lab samples, rainwater monitor. Um, all right, where is labs? Let's pull the latest project lab samples. what all that's about okay and I think I think I'm supposed to add it let's see GitHub. I know project lab samples I think uh, let's see what the difference is here but I'm pretty sure I should add it to main or I should put a pull request on main it's I don't know, maybe I should put it on develop um, I don't know if it really matters let's just put it on develop for now so we're gonna go to develop and project lab samples source what are we gonna call this water monitor water well water storage water storage monitor and let's get this in here what's the all right so pretty simple boop, boop, boop. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. water storage monitor and let's, let's rename this Water storage monitor. Is there a solution file? I guess not. And let's rename the name if if it's I don't can't remember if it's if there's a name in the project. Looks like not. Looks like no name. Okay, so there's there it is, and then. There is a solution. So each one of these, nope. So there's one solution for them all. So let's close this and open Meadow Project Lab Samples. The solution. Add existing project, water storage monitor, sweet. So let's make sure, let's say start is thing. Let's make sure it still works. New get packages need to be restored. Uh, restore new get packages. I don't think I can make a picture as nice as Jorge's there. Um, so I'll leave that to him. But if you guys want to run this at home, let's um, let's actually, let's put together a little information on it. Um, none of these have, looks like none of these have any information on how to set them up so i want to do a little fix here um also let me let me i have to switch screens for a sec to get my visual studio code file new window all right we're back so i want to i want to i want to rearrange this a little bit i don't like the the um these samples are lacking in documentation 
Um, so let's fix that, at least for this one. So I'm gonna remove this for now, water storage monitor. And then we're gonna do, um, I wanna move things a little bit. So water storage monitor, and then we're gonna do source and move everything into there. And then um, let's add a README. So let's go back over to our Visual Studio Code. Open this Git repos. Meadow Cord. Uh, was it Project Lab Samples? Let's open that. And do do do. You really should name rename these to samples, and then each one should have a source. Um, but I'm going to add a new file in there. Readme.md water storage monitor. This sample illustrates um, how to uh, is illustrates using a distance sensor to monitor. Um, the fill volume of a water storage container, such as a well or a rain barrel. And then um, let's see, hardware, our hardware setups. Um, also, it also illustrates, oh, I haven't pushed it yet. It also illustrates how to um, configure multiple hardware configurations, um, how, to, how, to, how to use multiple hardware configurations, um, i.e. IE a bench hardware setup and a lab hardware setup in a single um, application and, and easily switch between the configs, the hardware setups. So there's two hardware setups here. There's the bench hardware uh, configuration, um, which um, the bill of materials is, what's in here? One, uh, one project lab board, um, and then we need a VL one um, VL five three L zero X distance sensor, and um, then we have the lab um, lab hardware configuration. So the bomb on that is going to be, which we need to do, just do, oops. It's a project lab board and then a max botix, um, max botix Distance sensor. Um, yeah, so we'll set this up. Bomb. All your bomb. And this one. Get a fruit. This one. And you need a cable for that one. One. Um, QD cable. Stemma. Here, one of these. Stemma cable. Stemma QD cable. And 
on this one, you need the distance sensor and then you need uh, seed, seed, uh, you need a grove screw terminal, seed studio, grove screw terminal. Grove screw terminal. And then um, let's do assembly. Assembly. This one's super easy. Um, plug the distance um, sensor into the stemma cutie slash quick connector. That's the bottom, bottom, bottom connector on the project lab board using the Stem Acuity cable. I guess this is technically Stem Acuity like that. And then uh, that's kind of it for now on the bench hardware. The lab is um, a gross groove con terminal and you've got to wire that up. Um, so let's see, wire. So plug, um, what's the wiring config? Actually, we got some, got some images of already of this. So, which is uh, pretty rad. Um, somewhere here I have images. I captured this for something else. The water storage monitor, read me. Um, source, let's make a docs folder, yeah. I want you to just put it straight in there. But I do have some images elsewhere. I captured this before, so let me drag those in. So I got that image, that's good. And then I got this water barrel image. Oh, you need a water barrel, that's, um, that's important. One uh, 55 gallon uh, water barrel. And then Connect, so we got to connect the Max Botic. It's Max Botic's sensor um, to the screw terminal space one, two, three, four. And then we can put this here. Come on, there we go. There we go. There's that. Um, and then space, let's do it. Let's do a thing. Let's do a table of pinout. So it's going to be, um, max botics, uh, pin, uh, wires and, uh, grow wire, wire color, right? Wire color. And where did my picture go? Let's go back to this. Boop, 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 boop. You know, if you don't document stuff, it's not shipped as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so wire color on the Max Botic, so it's black to black, and it's red. 
to red and it's white to white white to white and it's blue to yellow and then um, once you've done that then to uh, plug the the growth oh you need a cable you need a, a cable too um, so one grove cable Boom. any of those would work one grove cable the Grove screw terminal cable into the, which one do we plug it into? The second one, the middle, into the uh, UART, into the uh, Grove UART, uh, which is the middle um, connector on the project lab, project, project lab board. of that there we go um it's a crappy picture let me change let me change the well, I can add a picture later um okay so plug that in and also uh hardware set too so um currently the application um application supports two hardware setups. One is a bench prototype, and one is a lab prototype. And this uh, utilizes, utilizes a um, 5.3 LX time of flight TOF sensor to model a uh, real world um, water storage sensor. And this utilizes uh, Max Robotics um, sensor and uh, a rain barrel. And then to switch between the two configurations, what do we do here? Where's the, oh, I gotta add this back in, right? Add, what's happening? Add existing project, cause I moved it. So water storage monitor source. And it's in here in the middle app. Um, change this line. Uh, change line 24. Oop. And we'll get a link to that. Edit the meadow app. Meadow app.cs file line 24. Okay, so let's check all this stuff in and see what it sh looks like on added water monitor app. Ooh. Okay. So here we are, Meadow Project Lab sans samples. Um, we don't have a new, a uh, nice photo yet. So we'll go source, um, uh, raw develop, water storage monitor. There we go. And Jim, there's a link for you. Uh, line 24. So let's actually link to that. 
Meadow app, line 24. Okay. Sweet. Uh, water monitor. Okay. Simple illustrates using a distance center to monitor the fill volume of a water storage container. Let me um, take a picture of this app. Boom, boom, boom. Picture of the thing. Okay, so I'll add that photo. Um, Capture. What the fuck's that? Oh, I don't want to update my stuff. Damn it. Image capture. I'm going to take that off the screen because who knows what one will find in my phone. Um, currently, the application supports two hardware setups, blah, blah, blah. Use Lysomatics and a rain barrel, switch between the things. Here's the setups. Um, oh, and I got image capture up. So let's get um, this. <laughs> it actually, it is <laughs> just pictures of nature and chickens. Well, no chickens, but lots of nature. All right, so here's my thing. What? No, I don't want to update my phone from here. This is stupid. All right, closed image capture. And um, let's open this up. So let's crop this thing. Tools crop. And let's export as a JPEG. We'll call this Project Lab Sample Source Water Storage Monitor. Okay, and we'll get rid of this hake. Water storage monitor, we'll put that up here. Picture of the project of a project lab for, for running the running the sample showing a graph of water um, fill volume in a water storage unit. Ah, that's good old text. I'm proud. So let's so add a photo and the link. Link push. Okay, water storage, blah, blah, all those things connected up. Sweet. All right. I think that is everything we were going to do for the day. Feeling pretty good. So almost three hours. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, there is, I've, I've, I've put everything up in the um, uh, repo and um, I'll try to add some more photos of the rest of the setup. Um, oh wait, I have one. I actually have one of this rain barrel, right? I've got this one. So we'll say, oh, and then install assembly um, three, install the, Max robotics sensor into a rain barrel. Image of the max robotics distance sensor installed in a fifty five gallon. Thanks, Jim. Much appreciated. Okay, we'll get that in. 
say um, linked to image of a rain barrel chat. All right, so refresh. There we go. Awesome. Rad, thanks everyone for showing up. Um, it was a bit of a long stream today, but uh, we got a lot done and I'm stoked on the progress that we've made on this um, water uh, sensor. And um, actually it was really cool today because we got to see something pretty neat. We got to see this. We got to see how easy it is to create multiple hardware setups. And then, um, you know, depending on your hardware, uh, do appropriate things in the application. Um, with the different hardware, right? And so we have the uh, lab prototype hardware, which instantiates um, the Max Botic sensor. We have the bench prototype, which uses the VL53 LOX sensor, and they all conform to this nice eye water monitor hardware, um, which has a range finder. And uh, yeah, and then in the app, you know, we do the appropriate things for that. So, like with the bench proto, we use the bench container, the storage can container config. And then um, for the lab prototype, we use a standard 55 gallon drum and everything works pretty well. So I'm pretty stoked on this. Uh, we did a lot of cleanup today. Uh, missing display hardware info in docs. Um, Jim, uh, elaborate, por favor. What do you mean by uh, display hardware info? Hmm. What display? Yeah. So the display is built into the uh, project lab board. So we've got it. Uh, uh, we've got it in here as a uh, project lab board because that has the in onboard display. But what we can do is link to this project lab board. Boo, 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 boo. Boom. And both of them, Project Lab Board. Yeah, it hasn't included ST7789 display, but that's all in the Project Lab Board um, information. So let me see, added link to Project Lab Board. Boop. Cool. All right, all right. Well, there we have it. So until next Wednesday, and I will see you folks um, again. In the meantime, uh, feel free to go ahead and build this and have some fun with it. So adios. <laughs>